Now, I'm hoping that there is going to be some fuel stations on this map, because I don't believe we have any additional fuel, which may be a concern later on. This thing isn't using too much fuel, although I did forget about that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 41975 and today we're playing some more SnowRunner. I've not played this game for a little while. Um, I think the last time that I did play this game was when I live streamed the Phase 3 update. And since then we've had another update to the game. So Phase 4 has now been released. And over the next couple of videos we're going to be checking out all the new maps. So, um, there's a few new things added in this uh, update. We've got two new vehicles, um, and we've also got four new maps. So, we've got the Amur region, I think that's how you pronounce it, and that's uh, a snowy region located in Russia. So, that's going to be very interesting. We've got Erska, Riz Erska River, we've got the Cosmodrome, we've got Cherna. Kamaskin, or I don't know how you pronounce that, and Northern Aegeus Installation. Now, the whole um, sort of story on this region is actually building a space shuttle launch site, which is really awesome, I think. And in the Season 4 trailer, they did actually show us the rocket launching. So, once you've completed all the missions on this region, you can actually go ahead and launch the rocket there is like a little cutscene of the locket uh, of the rocket actually launching which is really really cool um so what we're going to do over the next sort of four videos on snowrunner is check out each of these maps we're going to uncloak all the watchtowers and then i might go ahead off camera and do some of the missions and then try and actually launch the rocket because i've not really got into many of the uh, missions so far so today we're going to be checking out the Erska River map and uh, if I just go ahead and uh, open up the local map here you can have a little look at the size of the map um, I believe they're four kilometers by four kilometers all of the maps so um, they're some of the smaller maps but they're still pretty cool and it is in the snowy sort of uh, biome as well so that's really really nice and on this uh, map we've got four watchtowers to go and discover one is right here by the garage uh, that's just here so hopefully that one's not going to be too difficult to get and we've also got a brand new truck to go and have a look at now this is not one of the new trucks that were added with the phase 4 update this new truck that I'm driving here is actually a mod um, so you can see that it's a 1979 CT300 pickup and it's based off some kind of American pickup. I'm not entirely sure what exactly. It looks like it could be like a Ford F100 long, ba uh, uh, long bed or something like that. But it's a crew, a crew cab long base. I apologize for my words today. I'm getting a little bit uh, mixed up with them. But I thought this was a really, really cool mod. I've been in and just checked some of the customization already, but I haven't applied anything to the truck yet. So we're just going to go ahead and customize this truck quickly. There is a few tuning options for it. So we've got the 350 small block, or we can go for the 454 big block. Now, I believe the 454 is a Chevy engine. I could be wrong. Um but that might mean that this thing is based on some kind of Chevrolet I don't know um, then gearboxes we'll go ahead and throw in the off-road gearbox that gives us a low plus and low minus and then suspension we've got stock suspension we've got the stock hauling suspension so I think this is when you're towing a trailer it like stiffens up the stock suspension a bit or something I'm not really sure how that works or what it does then we've got the lifted medium and we've got the hauling version and then we've got the lifted high and the hauling version of that. 
I don't really want to go for the lifted high um, because it looks a little bit top heavy. I'm just going to go for the lifted medium. We're just going exploring so we don't really need a trailer so I'm just going to go for that one. And then tyre options. Now I'm not really sure whether we want um, mud tyres or whether we want uh, chain tyres. We are in the snow. If we encounter some ice then that could be an issue. Um, but then sort of mud tyres and off-road tyres can be a lot better um, in the snow. So I'm not really sure what we want to go for here. So it turns out we actually don't have any chain tyres for this truck. So I think we're going to go for some off-road tyres. Uh, we're not going to go for the full mud tyres. And... I think we'll just go for them, the 39 inch MT Bajar Claw, they look pretty good. Then winch options, we've got the stock winch, autonomous scout and autonomous scout extended. So the uh, normal one has a 20 meter length and the extended has a 40 meter length, so we'll go for the extended. We've got engageable diff lock is already applied to the vehicle, so that's good. Snorkel options, we've got the tall mushroom or we've got the tall front facing. I think we're going to go for the tall mushroom, that looks pretty good. Frame add-ons, now we've got a lot of frame add-ons actually and some of them are also linked to the paint options which is really cool. So we've got the CB base antenna, we've got the regular antenna, then we've got the two-tone bed which in this white colour you can't really see what that changes but that is actually a paint option then we've got the full body paint bed we've got the flat bed we've got the flat bed tools and fuel which kind of adds like a little generator on the back and some spare tires and things then we've got the roof rack supplies this is kind of similar what we get on the uh, f-150 or the f-350 i can't remember the snow runner ford that we have then we got the camper shell, we got the toolbox, we got the trunk repair supplies and the loading crane. So we're going to go for the trunk repair supplies and we're going to go for the toolbox as well. I think that's pretty nice. And then in visual stuff, we've got some rooftop options. So we've got running lights. I like those. We'll slap them on. We got beacons and fog lights, we got roof fog lights, or we've got roof lights. Now I can't really tell what the difference with these two is. It doesn't seem to change anything. Um, but I like the fog lights, so we're gonna go for that. And then bumper options. We got the brush guard with winch. We got the M uh, 1008 CUCV bumper. It's kind of like an old sort of Ford esque front bumper i don't know if this is based on ford but it kind of looks like an old ford sort of bull bar we've got the stock front bumper and the stock rear bumper i do like this uh cucv bumper so we're going to go with that miscellaneous things we've got two-tone paint we can go for full body paint and you'll see when we paint the vehicle in a minute what it actually affects we've got the black grill you can go for a chrome grill we can go for mud flaps and we can go for twin horns which are on the roof. I'm just going to go for mud flaps. I think that looks pretty good. And the black grill, I like that as well. Exhaust options. We've got side exit exhaust which you can just see there. Exit behind the rear wheels to the side or we can go for rear exit. Um, I think we might go for the rear exit. It does look quite cool. Kind of looks like a muscle truck. Then rim options, we've got these really cool like old looking rims. We've got these ones, again some like more old style rims. And then we've got these newer style kind of like billeted um, black rims with some studs in there. Not a huge fan of them, I like the stock ones so we'll leave them on there. And then paint options, you're going to see what this affects now. So. If you go for the full body colour, the whole body of the truck will be red. It won't have that white stripe. Or if you go for the two-tone, which it comes with standard, all of these will have a two-tone colour in, which I think is really, really nice. I prefer it with that two-tone. It looks really cool. 
So I'm not really sure what colour I want to go for on this thing. Um, I usually go for like a like bright colour, like a uh, a yellow or a red or something. But I think this thing does suit like a dark blue. I think that looks really nice. So we'll leave that on there. And then interior customization. I don't really run through these, but. Um, I haven't done it for a while so I'll just show you what we've got in here nothing very interesting I'm sure you've seen all these before so I'll just sort of run through them very quickly and there's no exterior customization at all so that is the thing fully customized it does have all-wheel drive it does have diff lock we've got that big block engine in there for some extra power and extra torque the thing looks amazing we've got some extra lighting on and uh, hopefully it's going to be pretty good in this new Erska River map. So let's head outside and go and get that first watchtower. So here we are outside in our awesome new mod truck for the first time. Now I did say this thing's got all wheel drive and diff lock. And I'm already having to use it because we've got some pretty thick snowy mud just outside of the garage here. but. The truck is uh, handling it quite nicely. The engine in this thing, I have to say, sounds fantastic. Um, I'm really impressed with the uh, the engine mod in this thing. So I'm not sure who made this mod, but if you're watching this video, you're probably not. It is an incredible mod. I really love the sort of crew cab long base. I've always liked those trucks. Now, I'm hoping that there is going to be some fuel stations on this map because I don't believe we have any additional fuel, which may be a concern later on. This thing isn't using too much fuel, although I did forget about that, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, let me just see here. I did forget that falling through the ice was a thing. I mentioned it earlier and immediately I've just forgotten about it so um hmm I may have to go and get another truck and just pull us out okay take her to the rescue we've got that truck out of there and um, I don't think we're gonna bother refueling it we've still got quite a bit of fuel in here um, well we might as well actually whilst we're here We've not made it very far, but we might as well uh, we might as well just top it off whilst we've got the opportunity, and hopefully we're not going to fall through the ice again. Now driving on this sort of blue ice, like you can see, I'm on here. This is really thick ice. Um, it might not look like it, but it is really thick. When you get on the snowy ice, so bits of ice that have got like snow or that are white that is really thin ice so if you're you know if you're playing on this region for the first time and you're struggling a little bit then that's what to look out for when you're driving on the ice all right here we go for our first watchtower there we go let's go ahead and launch the observation we don't really see much except the lake that we've just fallen into um, but if we open up the map now we should be able to see a few more things yes we can so the gateway to the Cosmodrome is over here which is locked at the moment so this is where we're hopefully going to get off the ice lake and up onto that road where the landslide was we bypass the landslide by driving on the lake there's not really a road up here but this thing has just made its own road up here it's absolutely fantastic to be honest um, I need to actually find where the road is. I think it might be more over this direction. But there we go. We've got our next watchtower. Let's go ahead and... Uh, oops. I meant to launch the observation. I like to just go through the cutscene and see if it shows us anything interesting. It doesn't really appear to show us anything interesting. But we've uncloaked half the map now and we can see a lot more things which is nice we can actually see the location of the next watch watchtower completely we've also got a quarry in this map which is pretty cool 
Now, something else that I did find quite interesting that my friend Daniel told me was, for those of you who are on Xbox, at the moment, if you have um, Game Pass, then um, SnowRunner is actually available on Game Pass. So if you have Xbox Live Ultimate or you have Game Pass, then you can actually play SnowRunner at the moment. It is on there, and... Um, I definitely recommend it if you've got Game Pass. You know it's free for you to play, so you might as well check the game out. And to be honest, it wasn't a game I was expecting a lot from, but when I started playing Snowrunner last year, I was actually, you know, surprisingly um, entertained by this game. It has quite a lot of depth uh, when you start playing it. There's a lot of side missions you can do. There's loads of cool trucks. There's a lot of customization available which wasn't really a thing in Mudrunner, so I'm glad that they kind of, you know, added a lot more customization for the trucks. And we also have mods now, which is really nice, so there's always new content in the game, whether it's actually released by the SnowRunner devs, or whether it's released by Mudrunners, there's always new maps and new trucks to explore, so there's a lot of variety in this game. Whatever tickles your pickle, then uh, give this game a go and see whether you like it. If you like car games and stuff, then you might enjoy this. And if you're someone like myself that plays a lot of racing games, then SnowRunner is kind of a nice change of pace. It's a very slow paced game. But when you sort of uncloak all the watchtowers, you know, when you complete a few contract missions, it's quite a rewarding game. It can be frustrating at times when you get stuck in things. Some of the maps are quite difficult, but it is a very enjoyable game. I'm not sponsored by SnowRunner either, I just want to point that out. Um, if SnowRunner wants to come and sponsor me, it would be greatly appreciated. But uh, yeah, just thought I'd share that, it's something that I found out this week. And um, if you guys are wanting to play SnowRunner, it is available on Xbox Game Pass. Another thing that I learned, and I know I keep sharing these sort of little factoids today, but... I'm struggling for stuff to say because, I mean, this truck is absolutely amazing, so there's not really much more I can say about it. I'm really enjoying this map so far. It's kind of nice, nicely challenging, but not kind of Imandra difficult, um, especially with this modded truck. You know, it's got quite a long winch, so um, we're not getting stuck too much. But SnowRunner is actually over a year old now. It's been out for over a year. So I bought the SnowRunner Gold Edition, which was the SnowRunner base game, and it came with the Season Pass as well. And um, Season 1 has actually finished, so Season, uh, not Season, the, the fourth update that we're playing right now is going to be the last um, sort of free update for Season Pass, or Season 1 Pass owners. Um but the season two pass has just been launched actually so that must mean that snow runner is going to be sticking around for a while the devs have clearly got some bigger plans for this game or some more updates in mind now i do know um when snow runner released last year they had four seasons planned and the fifth season was kind of um like a mysterious season it was sort of hidden behind a question mark and it looks like they've had quite a lot of support with this game there's a lot of modders have jumped on and made mods for this game and the player base has grown quite a lot especially with it on xbox uh, game pass at the moment there'll probably be quite a lot more people playing this game uh, so i think that maybe the game has grown a lot more than they thought it would and they've decided to add a second season to it. We're also dangerously low on fuel, I've just noticed. We've only got 23 litres left. So, not a whole lot. I would have liked a bit more than that. And I've not seen any fuel stations yet. So, um... Not sure what we're going to do about that. We might not be completing every watchtower in this truck. But I have to say, it's marvellous climbing up here. Not even struggled climbing up there. That was quite impressive, actually. I wasn't expecting it to climb up there. I was expecting it to slip a little bit. 
you're more likely to get up that with chain tyres, but these all-wheel, uh, or these off-road tyres that I've got on here seem to be working very well for me today. There we go, that's our next watchtower completed. Let's go and launch the observation. Can we see the next watchtower from here? We cannot. Um, let's have a look where that next watchtower is. It's just right here. So... We've got the gateway to Northern Aegeus Installation is just over here. So that might be the next map that we go and explore. I'm not sure yet. Because the other one I think was locked at the moment. Right, I've made it back down to the road here. But we are pretty much out of fuel. We've got 8 litres left. So not a whole lot to be honest. And I've just noticed my face camera over here is also on 2% of battery so if it cuts out halfway through this then I apologize um, but I think what I'm gonna do is go and get the Tega with the fuel on come and fuel the truck up and then we're gonna continue and get the last watchtower from there so we're all sorted out we are fully refueled and back on the road again we've got one watchtower left to go and discover i've had a little bit of a look on the map and set a route that i think is going to be the way to go um i did just come this way with the fuel tanker so i do know that this route is quite difficult um but hopefully it's nothing that our little american unnamed truck can't get through so there's our final watchtower just in front of us now i don't want to be deceived by that and just go flat out across that ice it does look relatively safe but since we're this close um it's likely that i'll fall in so i'm not going to attempt that one um i'm gonna just skirt around the edge over here and then slowly and cautiously make our way over to that watchtower we're gonna have to get up onto that road onto that bridge just to cross over to the other side because there's no sort of other crossing points so i'm just taking it nice and cautiously at this point but i usually give my review of the truck that i've been driving at this point and um i have to say this modded truck i can't remember the name of it right now don't know who made it i'm sorry but um it is available on console and oh boo boo the bridge is out um i'll continue giving my review in just a minute let me just see if there's a bit of a crossing point it does look like down here there's a bit of gravelly area just sort of down there we'll probably be able to cross down there so yeah the truck that i've been driving this truck what is it called let me just get it the ct300 pickup the long wheelbase crew cab it's an absolutely fantastic mod it's available on console so i'm sure it's available on pc as well if you haven't got this mod yet if you haven't given it a go then go and try it out it's not an op mod so it does still give you a little bit of a challenge you know i do try to pick mods that are still going to be um you know give me a little bit of uh, a challenge i don't like to make it too easy it makes it more interesting but this thing is also very capable, you know, it has all-wheel drive, it has diff lock, um, you know, it's got a good amount of customization. It's got a lot of power and torque for what it is, especially if you put in the bigger engine upgrade. So, yeah, that's my opinion on the truck. It's a very, very good mod, very well created. I really like the long wheelbase pickups and uh, it's nice that we have one in SnowRunner. I know we do have the F350 I think it is, um, but it's nice to see like a modded version of that with a bit more customization. Honestly, there are no real bad points this vehicle. It climbs rocks pretty well like you can see here, even though it's a long wheelbase, it does climb rocks pretty well, as I say that I have got it stuck. But the truck, just like you see there, it pulls you out every time. I've barely had to use the winch in this. It's got that long extended winch, which is a little bit cheaty. But, you know, when you're exploring a new map, it is quite nice. It does sort of, you know, put your mind at ease a little bit. But there we go. 
that is my review on the truck and that is the final watchtower discovered let's go ahead and launch our observation for the final time we can have a little look at the map now and see what we have uh, have discovered today it's quite a big map i think it's the four kilometer by four kilometer map um which i believe is the biggest size map i don't know i don't really uh concern myself with all that kind of thing but you can see we've got a few bridges to go and repair like we did in the last episode actually we went and repaired loads of bridges and um, we've got a few to repair on this uh, map so i'll probably end up doing those off camera we've uncloaked two gateways we've got the gateway to the cosmodrome which is currently locked so we'll probably have to do some mission to unlock that but we do have the other gateway to the northern aegeus installation which is probably the map we'll go ahead and explore in the next episode um, that is unlocked so if you want to see some gameplay of me exploring that region then make sure you subscribe to the channel we are almost at 1000 subscribers the support has been amazing over the last month or so and uh, for all of you who have continued to stay subscribed to the channel I really do appreciate it once we do hit a thousand subscribers I've got some big videos planned so make sure you do stick around for that but that's going to do it for today's video I hope you've enjoyed exploring the Erska River with me it has been quite a lot of fun and I've enjoyed driving that CT300 pickup that's going to do it though thanks all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video